again, this is a part of a broader project that's looking at these questions, these different layers, really trying to understand economic conditions and geographic variation in economic conditions. Um, as I just hinted, the political geography of this chain state has changed dramatically over the last few years. Uh, 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 it has shifted from uh, more of a democratic leaning state to more of a republican leaning state. It's always been a bit purple, but we've seen a, a strong shift in terms of the places in the state that are now more identified with the Republican Party. For the work that I'm going to share, uh, 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 Ji Yun Suk, who's the lead author on this, and I are kind of examining this central model, the idea that it used to be that you know, news and talk moved us towards participation and maybe even more deliberative forms of participation. Now we're seeing a kind of uh, these same factors pushing us apart, leading to uh, uh, the adoption of different sets of facts, uh, 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 trust of different groups and distrust of different groups, and ultimately participation grounded in that uh, uh, sense of uh, uh, antipathy. Um, the thing that we're trying to add to that model is really thinking carefully about the question of social context, and in this case, economic context. Does the economic context suggest to you that your community is doing better or worse? Is the, is the economic context one in which your community is suffering from unemployment for a long period of time or has recovered quickly? Um, there are massive county differences across the state of Wisconsin. So we are looking at kind of, we're going to separate it into four groups. We've got the urban core, which is Milwaukee and Dane County, which is Madison, heavily Democratic. We've got the suburban ring, which are often referred to as the wow counties, which are decidedly conservative, Waukesha, uh, 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 Ozaki, and uh, Washington. We've got urban clusters, large groups of, uh, you know, large kind of, not large, mid-sized metro areas surrounded by more rural areas, and the truly rural counties in the state. And so if you look at what happened, say, unemployment-wise in these places, you'll see, you know, Madison survived the recession pretty well. You know, you had, sure, a jump between 2008 and 9 in terms of the unemployment rate, uh, uh, but it, it was fairly resilient. Compare that to something like Washington County in uh, uh, that suburban ring, where what happened as the recession hit was a pretty sizable jump in unemployment. And compare that to a place like uh, uh, in that, that uh, urbanized cluster, more in the rural areas, where the shock of the unemployment change was just dramatic. And or even compared to the rural areas where when the economic shock hit, it did not dissipate as quickly. And so what we're doing today is really looking at survey data integrated with county level indicators. And what we want to start with is, you know, this is a lot of data based on the Marquette University Law School poll data combined with data that Kathy and uh, people she's working with provided about state level county indicators. Um, we have 41 waves of data uh, uh, from Charles Franklin's work. 700 registered voters per wave, sometimes more. Um, very representative sample of Wisconsin residents. And what we're able to do is look at these different groups and how they change over time. And I think this is a clue here as to, you know, the nature of where these pockets of support are and where populism is taking root. So this is I mean, the urban core. This is Madison and Dane County. Scott Walker is not liked here. The red line far exceeds the blue line. How about suburban areas? He's quite popular in suburban areas. Lost some popularity when he made the run for the presidency, but remained in the, in the blue. In urban centers, declined over time, and to the point where current polling suggests that he does not have as much support as he used to in those areas, and is actually in the negative. Same with rural areas, though fairly close. And this doesn't just hold for Trump. This, I mean, for, uh, uh, for Walker, uh, this, hold, this is uh, uh, looking at Obama and the urban clusters versus the suburban ring. This is uh, urban centers in rural. You can see, again, the same exact pattern where the real support for the Republican populist agenda versus the more Democratic liberal agenda is very much not suburban ring. So you can see, again, urban clusters. This is Trump favorability. And even though this line never crosses by election day, it did. Uh, uh, Trump won those counties. Uh, urban centers in rural again for Trump and then for Hillary Clinton. Where did she lose the election in the state of Wisconsin? You could say inner city Milwaukee, but I would say it was, it was in the suburbs. Yeah. I mean, that's where she, she lost it. And uh, we can see that same pattern played out. What I want to show you next, what is going to talk through, is some multi-level modeling, looking at how economic conditions, those changing economic factors, intersected with communication variables and, and a range of other factors to influence what people supported and when they supported it. 
question? Can we ask a question? Yeah, just, I might be the only one in the room that has it, but uh, can you define populism just the way you're, you're... Well, I think I'd say our definition of populism is a kind of appeal to, um, outside of you know, traditional ideological boundaries, a, an appeal to the everyday person, you know, to, the, to their contemporary concerns. Mike might have a more fine grained definition. What would you call it, Mike? Well, that's a, I mean, I think we're going to hear probably as many definitions as we have presenters today in, in one way or another. I would say, um, you know, populism is often thought of as a, a focus of a discussion of economic issues, but using language that often highlights different group orientations that might be racialized or gendered or ideological or partisan or regional or all of those. And so, um, you know, I think. I guess I'll stop there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll continue. Okay, so based on the observations of the trend um, plots on uh, political evaluations, we conducted a um, series of multi-level modeling to examine how people's political evaluations are more or less influenced by the contextual factors, uh, which is public um, political evaluations as like a nested. Um, attitudes within a higher, higher, or a higher order structure. So in this case, in the, in the analysis for the outcomes, we looked at um, evaluations of, toward Walker, Obama, Public Union, and Tea Party. We included um, several individual factors like demographics and political orientations and personal recession severity, which is the extent that um, how much people suffer from the recession and media use variable as well, including daily newspaper, local TV news, local online news, and local social media news, and political talk, talking with family and friends and coworkers. And as a county level predictor, we included the economic context, which is first the change in unemployment rate between 2008 and 2012 as an indicator of the economic rebound of each county. As well as we also looked at of the, the average unemployment rate from 2002, uh, 2009 and 2012 as an indicator of the general impact of um, unemployment rate within each county. So just to clarify, we, uh, um, I conducted a pair of multi-level models for, mm -hmm. um, for each economic context predictor for each outcome. So we also looked at two-way and cross-level interactions as well. So to start with the main effects of the model, um, there was significant, um, what was significant across the models was that the partisanship was a strong predictor for each um, ev political evaluation. Um, also, um, media use was also significant. Um, for example, local, local um, newspaper reading and local online news reading was negatively related to Tea Party evaluation, whereas social media use was positively and for talking, talking with family and friends was possibly associated with um, public union evaluation. The interaction effects um, reveal more interesting findings. So um, if you see the plots here, the, the red indicates strong Republican and orange indicates strong Democrat. So talking with family, engaging in political talk with family and friends actually amplified the partisan differences. In other words, the impact of partisanship on each of, each of this political evaluation were amplified um, when they more engaged in talk with um, family and friends, meaning the gap between partisanships has become much larger. For the, um, in contrast, for the talk with coworkers, it actually attenuated partisan differences. So for Walker and Obama, um, the impact of partisanship on evaluations of Walker and Obama, though the extent may not be as large um, compared to the previous one, but they actually decreased. The impact of partisanship actually decreased when they more engaged in talk with coworkers. We also found that <coughs> economic, um, economic contextual factor was a significant moderator in um, various ways. First of all, the economic condition moderated the online news use influence on 
political evaluations. For example, for Walker and Obama, this, these plots are from the analysis that I used um, the unemployment rate change from 2008 to 2009, I mean 2012. So the, here if you see the x-axis, the higher value indicates that the county has, um, the county's economic condition has become better. They successfully rebounded in terms of economic condition. And for high online news users, those who are living in non-rebounding counties here, um, if you see the green green line here, they're more likely to favor Walker. And in the same sense, they're more likely, they're less likely to favor um, Obama. <coughs> Social media use influence uh, shows a little bit different pattern. Um, for, um, for those who are high social media news consumer, living in non-rebounding counties, they're more likely to favor Obama. And in the same, con in the same context, this is, um, the x-axis is um, the mean unemployment rate from 2009 to 2012. So heavy social media users in high unemployment rate change counties, they were more likely to favor Walker. Economic condition also moderated uh, the partisan, partisanship influence on political evaluations. For example, for Obama and Tea Party, the impact of partisanship on Obama and Tea Party, they kind of attenuated, they kind of, uh, they kind of reduced when they were living in the county that had higher, on, higher unemployment rate at, or um, more um, non-rebounding counties. So our results show that um, Political evaluations can be shaped from various perspectives, including both individual and contextual factors. Much of the literature um, documents the relationship between communication and partisanship. However, I think um, we think um, our research uh, contributes to the previous findings. In a sense, we're looking at the intersection of communication and context, and partisanship and context, which all of which have important implications for polarization. Thank you, and I'm happy to take the questions. We'll save questions for the end. Okay.